What up, this is Rama Screen and the anticipation of the Cuphead show arriving February 18th, only on Netflix. I'm here talking with the composer of this new animated series, Ego Plum. How are you, Ego? Doing really good. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Good, good, good. Um, thank you for taking the time. Congratulations on the show, which I have binge watched uh, recently and I loved it. Uh, confession though, Ego, um, I had no clue about the video game prior to watching this show. How about you? Were you familiar with the video game prior to taking on this gig? And what's your reaction to the retro animation style of the show? Uh, I found out about the game about a year uh, before I got the job. A friend of mine, Steve, called me up and said, Ego, you got to try this game, Cuphead. It's really amazing. So uh, I played it and it blew my mind. I had never seen anything like it. And uh, when I got the call to potentially work on it, my mind was blown all over again because I thought it was one of the most original, unique projects I'd seen in a long time. And uh, they basically had me audition in a way. You know, they, the first thing I wrote was the devil song, which is on the first episode, the introduction to the devil character. And uh, that was pretty much what got me the job. And uh, as far as the retro style, I mean, I love that stuff. I was uh, influenced by, of course, Looney Tunes, like the 1930s style animation. But this goes even farther back to like the Fleischer Brother animation. Uh, all that stuff like Betty Boop and the original Mickey Mouse and the um, Silly Symphonies, all that has been a big part of my uh, musical influence for sure. So it's been a tremendous honor to be a part of something like this. It's so different. It's so different in the world of cartoons that it's like, I feel right at home uh, composing music for a show like this. I feel like all roads have led, have led me to Cuphead and I'm here now. Yeah, it does feel like, at least for me, when I was watching it, it felt like I was watching uh, back as a kid watching reruns of Heckle and Jekyll or you know the Mighty Mouse or something like that. <laughs> <It's so> sure. <laughs> yeah. Now you are no stranger to animation of course especially your work on many episodes of Spongebob Squarepants uh, but this particular new show is uh, goofy and wacky and zany on a nostalgic level. Um, I understand that the score of the video game uh, was composed by Christopher Madigan. So how did you build on what Christopher did and uh, at the same time also try to make it your own? Uh, and did you ever at any point find difficulties capturing the Cuphead show's goofiness and zaniness music-wise? First of all, what Chris Madigan did for the game was phenomenal. I think his work is brilliant. One of my favorite things about what he did is uh, he introduced a whole new generation of gamers and kids to this 1930s style music. Uh, one of my favorite things to see online was when I listened to his videos, uh, to his music on YouTube, and there'd be comments underneath like, what is this music? What do you call this genre? Like I imagine young people sort of confused, wondering, I've, I've never heard music like this before. And that's wonderful. For that, I owe Chris everything. So, but the thing we have to, you have to keep in mind is that I was not trying to imitate what, what Chris was doing because Cuphead show sort of runs in parallel to the Cuphead game. It's two different universes. Um, and musically, the demands were different than what the game needed, right? So in my case, we're, my music is serving the purpose of driving stories and you know, character arcs and uh, emotions and what we're trying to make the audience feel. So I can't just write like a five minute piece of big band jazz because in the middle of that, all of a sudden there's gonna be an emotional moment where people are crying and then all of a sudden they get scared and then they start running again. So the music has to stop and go, ebb and flow like a rubber band essentially. It's doing all these really funny things that if you hear the songs on their own, it, it comes off really strange. I mean, I love it, but uh, it's it's a uh, it's serving a different purpose. It's not just music for the sake of music; it's music for the sake of storytelling. You know. And um, what was the second part of your question? I think oh, I covered did, the. First did part. you find at any point difficulties in capturing the goofiness and the zaniness of the Cuphead show? Uh, you know, I'm going to say, I'm I'm going to say the answer is no because I feel so at home in absurdity and surrealism and all this silliness. It's something I always wanted to do as a composer. In fact, when I was like 14 or 15, first writing music, I set a goal to write cartoon scores for cartoons that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So I would like write cartoon music when I was a kid in high school, um, <laughs> hoping that one day I could do something like this. So I've always felt comfortable with musical absurdity and silliness. It's something that is second nature for me for some reason. Nice, thank you for sharing that now. Before I go for, forward, a quick side fun question for you. Which brother is your favorite, Mac, uh, Muckman or Cuphead, and why? Uh, I think uh, 
hmm. <laughs> Cuphead is my favorite. I like his attitude, his sort of fearlessness. Yeah. I mean, I think I aspire to be Cuphead, even though I'm maybe more Mugman in real life because he's <laughs> a bit more cautious. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I'll go with uh, Cuphead for sure. Thank you. <laughs> I, I agree the same. I'm more of a Mugman my person myself. Now, uh, right. you also co-wrote the main title uh, of the song, Welcome to the Cuphead Show. Who were your collaborators on that? And was that project more challenging or easier than composing scores that generally don't require lyrics? Right. Uh, well, it, it uh, okay, so the theme song existed before I came in. So Dave oh. Wasson and Cosmo Ferguson already had that. Uh, so it was my job to sort of produce that and arrange it. So they had the, the, the demo version, which was really great, but I found a singer for it. I, you know, played the piano on it and got the horn players that I wanted and sort of made it sound uh, the way I wanted it to. Um, and it came out great. I'm very happy with it. But it was definitely a collaboration. And uh, it's uh, a challenge in that, you know, when you when it's not, it wasn't purely my vision. So I was sort of at the service of cr trying to mold this into something that sounded great. Please them, please me, please everybody at the network. So yeah, it's always challenge to uh, collab to. It's always a challenge to collaborate with others in writing music, as opposed to just letting something uh, free flow from my head. I always ask composers this question, so I'm going to ask you this as well. Um, instruments. Uh, talk to me about musical instruments that you incorporated into composing the score for the Cuphead show. I read that uh, Carl Stalling and Raymond Scott are are among some of your influences. Did that apply to the instruments that you chose in order to create that quirky, jazzy sound straight out of a 30s, 40s cartoon? Absolutely. So I went for very traditional instrumentation for this show. So when you hear a lot of the, the chase numbers of the songs, you're going to hear the instruments that would have normally be in a big band, which would be like, you know, the woodwinds, the tenor saxophone, baritone saxophone, alto sax, clarinets, trombones, trumpets, and then, you know, a piano player drums and upright bass. Those are sort of like the basis of a lot of the stuff on Cuphead. And of course, the same instruments that would be popular in the 1930s. So uh, traditional instruments doing non-traditional funny things is, was sort of the goal of what I was trying to do here. Because a lot of the time, it's not just normal big band. It, it goes off into other directions too. Like we'll have a chase that's based on a big band theme, but then they'll say, well, make it scary because there's a ghost or there's a monster or whatever. And all of a sudden, I have to make the big band music twist and feel like, like a spooky piece of music. So it was that was really the challenge, right? Trying to take traditional music and make it do things it's not supposed to do. So uh, yeah, but that was a lot of fun to do. But a little challenging because of the uh, pandemic and the way we had to record remotely. It wasn't as easy as just being all in a room and you know setting up a microphone and saying go. It was this was like someone recording in New York in an apartment and someone recording over here uh, and then us putting it together here at my studio. Wow, that is a testament to you guys' uh, skills and talents uh, <laughs> combining all of those sounds together. Now, lastly, uh, I understand that the Cuphead show has been officially renewed for a second and third season on Netflix. Uh, I take it you're coming back as well to score all, uh, all of that. So has that work already started on the new season or if not, when will that start? And in your conversation with Dave, what other potential sounds or other music that you plan on bringing to the table for the new seasons? I'm in the middle of working on the third season right now. Wow. Uh, I'm doing that today. So uh, it's really exciting. Uh, there's a lot of great new songs that I can't wait for people to hear. Uh, some characters that you wouldn't expect to sing are going to be singing. I won't say more than that. Uh, it's really exciting. I think some of our better music is happening in the later episodes, frankly. Ooh. Probably because, you know, we were just sort of getting, I was getting my bearings and figuring out what the sound and tone was. And now I get it. I feel like I get it. And hopefully people will stick around and watch, you know, the second drop and the third drop when it all happens. And then final, final question. Uh, are you also sure. working on other projects or uh, your life is all around, uh, revolving around Cuphead Show for a while? Uh, life is all about Cuphead right now. It <laughs> consumes all my time. I even started dreaming in Cuphead. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> For two nights in a row, I my dreams were animated and it was the Cuphead world. And 
I got scared then when I woke up like, is, is that normal? I've never dreamt like that before. But yeah, it's been consuming all my time. Although, you know, I do have a, I do work for the SpongeBob universe, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants and uh, Camp Coral and the Patrick Star Show. So those are always sort of coming out whenever they drop them. And I'm doing work at Warner Brothers on uh, Jellystone, which is the Hanna-Barbera reboot. And that's a lot of fun. And we'll have more of those episodes probably later this year or the following. I'm not sure. I don't have a, a, a sense of the schedule. But uh, yeah, I'm doing a lot of fun things. I'm very lucky to be working on all these great projects. But right now, it's all about Cuphead. Well, I, I'll tell you, much respect to you. And uh, you know, in this show, it's very much my cup of tea. <laughs> great. So, did you enjoy uh, the, the music and everything? Yes, I loved it. I think I've, I've rewatched it again now, uh, coming to the second time around and still loving it. It's just so great. What you guys did was just so fantastic. So thank oh, you. Thank you for saying that. That means a lot. And thank you for taking the time to talk to me because I've been sitting quietly for about four years and haven't had a chance to say much. So this is like, I'm just bursting at the seams with, with joy and just things I want to share. So I appreciate your time too. All right, for my fans at home, everybody go check out the Cuphead show arriving February 18th, only on Netflix. Uh, Ego Plum, thank you for talking to me and congratulations, sir. Thank you. Uh, 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 uh.